Welcome back to the 100 Days of the 2023 National Electrical Code Changes Series. My name's Ryan Jackson, and I hope you're having a wonderful day. We're almost done. We're at Article 726, which is a new article in the 2023 covering Class 4 Fault Managed Power Systems. Now, this is a really interesting technology, in my opinion. So, Class 4. All right. You have power and lighting. That's Chapters 1 through 4. Easy enough. You have remote control and signaling circuits. Now, historically, that was Article 725, Class 1, Class 2, Class 3. Now, in the previous version, in the previous video, we talked about why we no longer cover Class 1 circuits in Article 725, because Class 2 and Class 3 are safe from fire and electric shock. Class 1 is not, so Class 1 has its own article. 725 covers Class 2 and Class 3. 724 covers class 1. Now we have a new classification and it's class 4. Now again, we're calling this stuff a fault managed power system. And I want to emphasize that terminology. In article 725, we have remote control signaling circuits that are safe from from fire and electric shock because they're power limited, all right? Um, if you have a doorbell transformer, the amount of power coming out of that thing is not enough to kill you or to start a fire. So it's safe because of the power limitations of the power source. All right, That's what really drives Article 725. Well, Article 725, as you might guess, um, is very limited in the amount of power that can come out of the, out of the power source because that, that's its very nature. It, it's a power limited source. Well, because of that, we can't do a lot with a class two or a class three circuit. Now, we can do more than we ever were able to before, right? We, we have power over ethernet lighting now, which is a class two power source, but coming out of a PoE switch, power over ethernet switch, that's a class two circuit. Coming out of that, you can only pick up, you know, one or two lights or a couple of lights. So it, it's very limited in what you can do with it. What if we could create a type of circuit that had significantly more power output, but was also safe from electric shock and, and fire? Well, we'd have to really think outside of the box because again, what makes a class two or a class three circuit safe is the inherent limitation of the power source. So if I get a bigger power source, we lose that inherent protection. A class four power limited, a, a class four fault managed circuit is not necessarily power limited. Now, are there limitations to the power? Well, of course, there's limitations to, to all power sources. But a class four power source considers uh, safety from fire and electric shock by limiting the amount of power that can flow during a fault. Okay, and that's why it's called a fault managed power system. So you can get a lot more power coming out of a class four power source than you could with a class two or class three. However, it's still considered safe from electric shock. Now, that may seem kind of contradictory. If I have that much more power, well, don't tell me it's safe, right? Listen, these circuits can operate at up to 450 volts. So don't tell me that's safe from electric shock. It's 450 volts. Well, wait a minute now. It actually is safe from electric shock, and I'll show you how. So Article 726, let's dive into it. 726.1, of course, is the scope of the article. New article for class four circuits was created. Now, these things are brand new. Uh, there's not a lot in article 726 um, because it's, it's in its infancy, but we'll expand this and I think you'll see this product uh, making more and more headway into the industry. So article 726 covers class four circuits. It starts with a transmitter and ends at a receiver. All right, and that's the key here is it's, it has a, I don't wanna say a power source, it has the power source and then it has receiving equipment. So on the left is the power source, the transmitter, and on the right is the receiver. And the circuit between those is the class four circuit. Now again, it can operate it up to 450 volts, which on its head does not sound safe from electric shock, but remember, when it comes to electric shock. What makes electric shock dangerous, the severity of your electric shock, is how much current is going through you. All right, now, it's not just how much current is going through you, but it's how long is that current going through you? What's the duration of the electric shock? And there's also things like the frequency of the circuit. So your resistance is going to determine how much current flows through you. 
all right? You're, let's say, a 20,000 ohm resistor, all right? So it doesn't take a lot of electricity to, to, to get enough uh, current going through you to kill you because it only takes somewhere in the neighborhood of 100 milliamps to stop a human heart. So if you're a 20,000 ohm resistor and you get hit with 120 volts, that can obviously kill you, right? I equals E over R. Well, this is 450 volts. So 450 volts going through the same 20,000 ohm resistor is going to yield a much greater shock than a 120 volt circuit, right? Yes, but here's the caveat. Here's what makes a class four circuit safe. Again, it's not just the current that flows through you. It's the duration of how long that current is flowing through you. On a class four circuit, we limit the fault, all right? And the way it's done with this product is there's a handshake agreement that happens between the transmitter and the receiver. If you're familiar with, uh, with the computer industry, uh, packet transfers or data handshakes is kind of the same concept. So 500 times every second, the transmitter and receiver are communicating with each other. The transmitter sends voltage and current and the receiver gets it, all right? And the transmitter, while it's sending that power, it also is asking a question to the receiver. It's like, hey, did you receive this package? And the receiver sends it back to the transmitter and says, yes. And then it sends more power and it says, hey, did you get this one? And the receiver says, yes, we got this one, right? 500 times every second. And if the receiver ever answers the question by saying no, okay, so the transmitter says, hey, I just sent 450 volts, did you get it? And the receiver says, no, I did not. Boom, it opens the circuit in one five hundredth of one second. Now listen, if you get shocked at 450 volts, you're gonna wish you hadn't. <laughs> unless, unless the duration of the shock is one five hundredth of one second, you wouldn't even feel it. You wouldn't even know you got shocked if you're only getting shocked for one five hundredth of one second, all right? So that's what makes this thing safe, is it shuts itself off if anything bad happens, all right? Whether that be a fault, or an electric shock. So it is safe from shock and from fire initiation, not by the power limitations, but by the technology itself, all right? So that's what a class four circuit is. Um, you'll also hear this called digital electricity, and I, I think that's a registered trademark of a company called Volt Server, and that's whose uh, equipment we're looking at here. I'm certainly not trying to, uh, to advertise for anybody, but you can see, you know, pretty prominently that that's, that product is created by Volt Server. Uh, they're probably the most common manufacturer of the transmitter and the receiving equipment. This cable down here is a listed Class Four cable. Uh, this is made by the Belden Company. Most of you guys are familiar with uh, with Belden cable. So there you have it. There is my Class Four circuit. And of course, we also added a bunch of definitions in Article 100 to talk about this stuff. We added, you know, Class Four receiving equipment, Class Four transmitting circuit, Class Four circuit, fault managed power. I'm not going to talk about all the definitions, other than to say that we did put them in the code. So here we have Article 100 fault managed power, power system that monitors for faults and controls the circuit current to maintain safety during a fault. Very, very good definition because that's exactly what it does, right? It monitors the circuit and then it controls it should a fault occur. All right, so there is your class four power system. Interesting technology and I don't think we've seen the last of it. So get used to it because I think it's probably here to stay.